It will be transformative for your business, for your real estate holdings, and for your personal wealth. Look at what Bitcoin and Litecoin are doing in, in, in terms of finances in the next few years. Look at tokenized real estate. If you pay attention to space, it's going to impact your life. You might as well get a piece of it and let it make your life easier, better, and more streamlined and wealthier while, while it's still super young to adopt. To Nathan Poole, Nathan is a real estate investor. He is also a specialist in crypto mining. And yeah, let's get into the foxhole. Oh. Before we jump deep into it, Nathan, I want you to give them a breakdown of who you are, what you do, and what you're about. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Nathan Poole. Uh, we have, uh, we're, we're business people, right? So we have a uh, real estate uh, related businesses, um, specifically a mortgage brokerage, a real estate brokerage. We have a GC firm, commercial government, civil, real estate investors, you know, uh, commercial uh, land development, uh, residential flips, you name it. We've done it in the real estate space, um, as has my partner. Uh, he's got, the, I, I'm pretty sure, all the same exact businesses, too. Um, and so we're, we're real estate people, primarily, um, and investors. And uh, and now we have a, a crypto mining farm. Uh, the mining farm now has uh, several facilities in Florida and North Carolina. So we are uh, in, in the southeast U.S., primarily. And uh, and my, my primary passions are, are Jesus and crypto, really, are my, my two uh, things that you, you wanted to talk about it. let's let's talk for you know eight ten twelve hours let's go so uh so i'm excited to be here today awesome fantastic man all right let's let's hop right in um you are have been playing around the crypto space for a long time how did you get into crypto just starting out how did you become the crypto guy what, what was what was the genesis there uh my wife's a cpa and we had a we had a tax problem right gc firm mm -hmm. was doing good uh, we were scaling up. We had scaled into a, you know, civil contracting, government, commercial, all kinds of some, you know, some bigger size projects. And, uh, and we had a tax problem and I decided, man, there's so many employees with construction. I don't want to have to deal with all the employees and all that kind of stuff. I said, Let, look, let's, let's try and do somewhere. There's a little bit less employee management, a little, a little bit less risk. I didn't like all the risk in it. So, uh, right. my wife, you know, comes to me in December, says, here's what you got to spend in in something that's fully bonus appreciable and she says what you're going to do i said well this year it's, it's not going to be construction related you know i'm tired of excavators and skid steers and stuff she says well what are you gonna do i said i'll let you know in a week and so i was looking right and i'm looking my parameters were high roi okay. i said i need uh you know a uh, higher ROI needs to be semi-passive for me because i you know I'm, I'm working and uh and i wanted to be fully bonus appreciable and so uh settled on crypto mining and and we didn't even own any cryptocurrency she goes what What's a crypto miner and what's cryptocurrency? I, I, don't, I don't know none of it, but I'm gonna figure it out now. And so we did. We went all in. We spent a bunch of money on crypto mining, you know, in the following three weeks because that is December, and right. uh, we so that we could write it off. And uh, and you st so we started out like business and tax play. She's the CPA, and she's like, here's you know here's the numbers, and uh, and now I find myself like I realize like this is transformative. The world is changing with mm -hmm. this tech super exciting time to be alive and especially in the space and so we're uh i'm excited to be be doing what we're doing now fantastic man yeah and you and from what i understand um you are part of a military-owned business you and your partner um, your partner has been in the military and you got family members have been in the military what has kind of been the biggest revelation for you with working with someone who's in the military into a business that they may not necessarily have a full comprehension of when it comes to like the crypto side of the house. What is that? How does, how do you kind of work that part? Cause you know, in a military mindset, we're go, 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 go. And when we come into the, the, the civilian sector, if you will, it's a weird kind of conversation that has to happen between the partner and the military member or a firm military member. Hey, this is how things go. You know, don't sweat the small stuff. You're worrying too much, that kind of thing. <laughs> How was that kind of talking with your partner and kind of educating on the crypto side and really bringing him into this? Man, it's it's been really great. Uh, you know, with my dad being Air Force, I, I right. you know I kind of grew up in a, a little bit more of a, a rigid home. It was it was you know it was a well balanced home, I'd say. And uh, but I understood and respected the the dignity, the human dignity that goes with routine and. Mm -hmm structure and and discipline and so like you know i grew up wrestling 
And so he's, you know, the, the, the military vet and, and my wrestling coach, right? So that right. structure and the discipline and you wake up early and you go do the run and you go do the sets and you, and you put in the time and you put in the effort. And, it. uh, and so it's been great. And my, my partner's also very, very structured and a very super smart guy and, and real structured in his, in his approach to the day and really disciplined. And, and so uh, I think we, we get along real well with that because of that, you know, there's a, we, we, we have that mutual respect of, Hey, look, if work's got to happen, you're going to get after it. And we're going to make it, right. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put in that work ethic and the extra hours, you know, I, you know, you, I'm, I'm here on the, on the, the call with you at 7:40 at night. I'm still at the farm. And I'm like, well, maybe when we're done, I might have a few more hours left in me. So, <laughs> you know, we, we get after it, you know, that's what we do. I love it. I love it. You said one of my favorite phrases, get after it. And that's exactly what we're here to do today, man. You, I, as we can see, you're already, you're in the crypto farm grinding it out right now as we speak what was it like for you purchasing that first crypto farm what was that experience like oh man uh well we started mining at our house okay and it was wild right we you know it's, it's just our house and then we're upgrading electrical panels and then we're <laughs> we're doing one thing leads to another and right and then we're we're um yeah so we we it, it started that way and then it turned into a one megawatt farm and then we went from there to uh to four and then you know eight and nine and so now we're growing and we got you know we're breaking ground on 24 megawatts so as we grow like it every every step you still have that imposter syndrome right, right. you know you buy the first you have buy the first computer like i don't know what i'm doing i'm not a hacker how am i supposed to do this and then you know <laughs> here i am you know dozens of megawatts later and you still i don't know if you ever really get past the imposter syndrome yeah. right yeah. So, you, you know, well, well, but the Lord always does it, right? He did it in construction. I don't know how you're going to do the first, you know, million dollar job. And I don't know how I'm going to do the first multi-million job. And then you, as you scale and as you go, you, you, you realize this is this, you know, the Lord's with you and he's right. walking beside you. And as you scale, it, it, it works out. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, man, 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 Nathan, again, because of the excitement, I'm, I'm trying to get my thoughts together and trying to work this slow. The conversation so we don't just overwhelm the listener break down the importance to you of crypto right now as it relates to real estate Ooh, it is huge uh so like some of my buddies in the space they're doing tokenized real estate are, are you are you familiar with that have you ever looked into any of that I, so i've experienced i, I was I, so i'm bi i've been big on solana for some time um, I was deployed and I was trying to buy Solana. And as a matter of fact, that's kind of where I stalled out. I deployed and it was very hard to get a good internet and I was missing NFT drops. And I dis I dislike losing just like most, <laughs> just like most athletes in military. I can't stand losing. And I kept feeling like I was losing. So I kind of dropped off of it for a bit, but I held on to my NFTs. I've still got a lot of, uh, quite a bit of Solana crypto, but Solana had been my space. So I had experienced some of the NFTs that were tokenized to to go against actual physical real estate um it was one of the drops that i missed out on and i haven't checked up on the project as of late but to me when i saw that man my mind was blown because to me there's, there's so much utility there i don't have to have that physical piece of paper anymore now i can have this small shoe with a tongue out for whatever reason and this represents my ownership in that property or into that real estate investment but that's mm. that's my experience as it stands now Okay. Uh, well, if you if you check out, um, there's some some companies. In fact, a few of them. Uh, if you okay. want, I can connect with you afterwards. I'll get you some links and stuff. But there's people that are taking real estate and tokenizing them. So, for example, let's say you want to buy a ten million dollar you know apartment complex that gives you a particular cap you want, and uh, but you don't have the ten million dollars, and you might not even have the the three or four million dollars to leverage into it. So, how do you get that piece. Well, what they're doing is they're taking this $10 million asset and they're dividing it up into like a million dollar coin, a million mm -hmm. coins at 10 bucks a piece. And if you own that coin, it's like an NFT and you get your 10 cap on that coin. It's basically wow. like a fund, like a regular, like a, a fund for accredited or non-accredited investors. They got a bunch of different setups and they're buying real world real estate assets. Uh, even I, I, one of my buddies is doing Airbnb, launches fourth Airbnb, and the Airbnb <laughs> is a token. I'm like, man, did, I'm me? like, Sidhu, did you just put, did you just put uh, a three bedroom, two bath, 
uh, you know, Osceola County, Florida thing on a, and he's like, yeah, here's my tokens. And he divides oh the God. tokens and then the revenue gets paid out via tokens right to your wallet. But it's wow. cool because it's in a smart contract. So you don't have to worry about, did this guy get paid right? Or did I get my cut? It's all right. automated. So you look at it and say, all right, this is the contract. You sign it, you buy your tokens. And if you want to sell your tokens, you sell your tokens. You don't get your 10 cap or your 12 cap or your three cap or whatever anymore, but you get your, but you get your money back from your tokens. And so it's really neat. Some of the stuff to do in the space. Holy smokes. Okay. So how, if, all right. So as let's say, and we're going to, we're going to start, maybe we go a little bit back for our beginners, for the beginners. What's the first thing they need to know as far as when it concerns them or understanding how, um, tokenized real estate works or how crypto works into real estate. What would you be your first rec your recommendation there? Ooh, uh, uh <laughs> yeah, the first step <laughs> in, in, in crypto is probably just buying crypto, right? Okay. Like if you're, if you're new, if I'm telling my, you know, extended family saying, Hey, here's how you get into crypto. It's probably right. look, download, a, a wallet. Here's a cold wallet. I'd be showing them how to use a cold wallet. Here's an mm -hmm. exchange. Here's how to make your account. So it'd be really kind of uh, entry level like that. But in terms of tokenized real estate, um, they've got a bunch of legitimate companies that are either even putting their stuff out on um, on uh, like LinkedIn. Like if you look up tokenized real estate on LinkedIn, you'll see mm -hmm. a bunch of trending articles and people that are doing it. Um, most of the people that I'm connected with in the space, I met in um, in these these crypto conferences and then you know we we continue our relationship through linkedin and so like there's a bunch of people that are doing this kind of stuff and they're they're basically making an nft of the deed of a house and then they're dividing that nft into a bunch of tokens that represent the ownership of that token of that nft called a deed and like you know i was recently talking to a banker and he's like well man you're in the you're in the mortgage space you're in construction you're in real estate why aren't you entitled i'm like man Title's not going to exist in 20 years. He goes, what do you mean? I go, why would I want to buy into a dying industry? He goes, how do you figure? I said, they're all going to be on, they're all going to be tokenized. It's all NFTs. Yeah. Like, why would I need to do a back, uh, you know, a full title search and title check in 20 years when I can just pull up the NFT and, and make sure that, uh, that the, there's no liens on my, on my title on, on the blockchain. I love it. I love it. So this is what I find interesting is I was actually listening to, um, I heard Ryan Pineda talking about it with uh, Pace Morby at one point. And they were like, you know, they specifically mentioned the same thing you just did, titles. They're like, hey, title's not going to exist the same way it does now here in about three to four years. They said, hey, we want to get in front yeah. of it, all that great stuff. And I'm not, I'm not taking it away from them. I'm sure they're going to get after it. I'm sure they're not going to be the only ones, though. What would you say when you're looking at this? If I wanted to set up, let's say I'm, I'm already investing in real estate as I am. And I say, hey, I want to do this. I want to be able to tokenize my property. And just like you say, make everything automated because, you know, we're yeah, sure. You not. I'm not a hacker. Like you said, I'm not a hacker. I'm not a not that much of a computer guy and I'm not good at math. But automating things makes that all easier. Where do I start to learn how to do that? What would be the first move for me? So when I started mining, um, I. I I actually hired a consultant and we flew him in and he kind of came in and trained me and taught me a bunch of stuff and, mm -hmm. and helped uh, us broker some connections with, you know, new relationships in the field. And I'll nice. tell you that type of thing, finding somebody that's in the space that can help you is invaluable. It's so important to have that. I would say um, there's a bunch of companies right now that are doing it as a service. They're tokenizing real estate as a service. So I would look up those companies, I'd research those companies, find out how they're doing it. And some, some of the people in the space are doing it with their own real estate, but some, their service is tokenizing real estate and setting you up to succeed. And that's all they do. They don't own real estate. They don't invest in real estate. They just help you tokenize your real estate. So that's probably where I'd start. Instead of, re instead of learning the blockchain or the code or the law behind it, like mm -hmm. you're going to probably spend years getting that point when you can say, Hey, I'll pay this guy, you know, 3%, depending on the property, 5%, 10% of the down payment of what I would pay on the property anyway, and let him tokenize it. And, uh, and then he'll, there's some guys will actually give you the 
legal against that you have to file with the SEC, for example, if you're doing like a fund or whatever, wow. and they'll do it all on your behalf. So it's, a, it's in the same way that we have like title companies, mm-hmm. in the same way that we have companies that deal specifically with, um, with like, like setting up, you know, a, 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 a fund or a, or a, um, uh, or some of these other vehicles for, for, for raising funds from others, you can, you can go right to the tokenization a- a companies and they actually do the legal work. They have lawyers on their team. They'll do the legal work to partner you out and, and it's done for you. And it, you're just, you're just selling tokens at that point. Holy smokes. Okay. That, that makes things abundantly easier. I'm certain. Um, not just for myself, oh, yeah. but for anybody <laughs> yeah. who's interested in doing it. Cause that's, that's half the battle right there. Like you don't have to be able to, you don't have to sweat mm-hmm. everything. You can, just like you said, put him into the deal at whatever percentage on the down payment. Boom. They are getting paid. You're not, you don't have to break the bank to come out of pocket from the jump. You can actually put that into the deal. That's fantastic. All right. So one of my buddies actually was mm-hmm. doing it as part of the D part of the equity. So he's like, Hey, mm-hmm. don't even pay me. I'll do it. And just cut me in. Some of these tokens I'll keep for me and your thing. And I was like, that's, just brilliant and i <laughs> yeah, that, that's a winner for everybody right absolutely absolutely now when you do this though when you farm how are you balancing those big books with your property with the capex and all that how are you how do you implement the farming into it does it just become a part of the capex or is it like a whole separate piece um in in what regard what in terms so, of like the crypto mining farm piece? Yeah, or, right. So when you put the farm in, right, when you install the farm into the property, how do you account for the amount of energy it's going to take from the property versus, you know, stuff you got to do to repair and all that? Does that go into the same gotcha. the same books as the property or is it split up? How does that work? So I guess to, to give the listeners a little bit of a backstory, uh, we, we're doing real estate plays with mining, right? Now, mind right. you, I'm, I'm sitting... As we said, if you can see the video of it, at an at a purpose built mining farm. This is nothing going on here but crypto mining. However, we have real estate plays that we're doing and we're uh, and we're mining at those facilities. And there's a few benefits for that, right? So mm-hmm. one of the benefits is you're increasing the the profit from one property. So if one property, let's say you put one dollar into a property and it gives you a dollar every five years, well, if you can put a dollar fifty in a property, but now it gives you two dollars every five years, well, you'd be silly not to do that, right? So you, you put a little bit more in the CapEx. The cool thing is on mining, the CapEx is almost all very depreciable. So like your your pan, your electrical panels, your transformers, your fans, you know, your exhaust fans and your cages, your, I'm sitting here at racks and, you know, your ethernet switches, all of this uh, is either fully uh, right off in the first year or bonus appreciation or very heavily accelerated depreciation because it's not rated the life of the building. It might be rated for three to five years. We hope to make it last as long as we can, but for tax purposes, we can write most of the stuff off in a few years. So, so it really helps from that perspective on the tax side. So you have assets over here that are making money and now you can shelter them in, in the mining piece. So, a, it's a great tax play for the real estate. B, you're increasing your revenue significantly. So you might have, a, a, like we had an Airbnb where the revenue, the profits after electric costs of mining in the detached garage were making us more than the Airbnb profits from keeping it fully rented 24-7. Wow. So wow. we were making more off of the access to the electrical panel than we were, <clears throat> pardon me, off of off of the actual Airbnb and the Airbnb was a great conference center, right? You know, it was probably 50% more than the, than the, and we also were making more than that just in mining the crypto. And so there's, there's ways of coupling it together. So with one, one asset, we've been historically looking at an asset. Uh, this is what the blockchain does really neatly. We look at an asset. That's a house. That's one, two, three, ABC street, right? But it's, it doesn't have to be one, two, three, ABC, C street. It can be an NFT that's now a thousand tokens that can be internationally shared, that can be bet and wagered on, that can be shorted, that can be gone long on, that can be put into, uh, you know, all these different vehicles for wealth creation. They can even be leveraged further by the tokens. If somebody's got a token, 
uh, that is producing a strong enough revenue, the, the, the vehicles are just actively being applied for now. Uh, and ha some of them have been applied for for a while where you can actually leverage on tokens of the assets that are leveraged, which I'm not saying that's good, right? Maybe that's how the economy <laughs> goes up and down so far. I'm not saying it's good. I am saying it's neat, right? right and right. I am saying it's another vehicle for some really cool expansion in all kinds of different asset classes. So, so one, one of the things that is really neat about partnering the real estate play is the tax. You got the extra income. Another thing that's really neat is when, when people see that asset, you can shuffle things for tax purposes based upon uh, what the, the tax law allows you to do. So if you need to show you know X amount of dollars for revenue, you can sell crypto. Right now, there's not a wash sale in crypto. So you can sell that crypto, take that crypto, hold that crypto, and now it's earned income. If you need to show more income, if you right. need to show less income, well, you don't sell any of that. And you take the profits from your real estate play to pay the over massively oversized electric bill. And now you're holding on to crypto and there's no tax on crypto until you sell it. Oh, so dude. if you have a really good year, you don't have tax. And if you have a really bad year, you don't have tax. But as long as you're holding it for the long term play right. and you're and you're playing the uh, And again, I, I'm not this is not tax advice. Seek your CPA. Yeah, we're but not, when you we're mine not financial ex experts here. Not financial no, experts. No, finan no financial advice whatsoever. No financial advice. This is a couple guys talking, right? But if you're mining cryptocurrency and you take the profit from your rent to pay the mortgage and the electric bill, and then your cryptocurrency you just happen to hold as a token of whatever you feel like holding, mm -hmm. that particular token, until you sell it for US dollars, is not a taxable event. When you sell it for US dollars, it becomes a taxable event. In which case, you go, in my opinion, back to real estate because you sell that token at a taxable event. Now, what are you going to do with that? You're going to buy an opportunity zone crypto mining farm, which is exactly where I'm sitting right now. Oh, it's an snap. opportunity zone crypto mining farm because, well, if you've got profits from over here and the law allows you, and again, I'm only saying talk to your CPA about it, but right. if you buy an opportunity zone property and you turn that into crypto mining farm, well, then now you've got the same exact thing and now your tax problem still isn't there until you, you keep kicking the can down the road and and ultimately in, in a perfect world you you know what's up what do the super wealthy do they borrow they what do they do they 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 borrow and then they they uh borrow borrow die or something right they'll they'll have Basically, this massive yeah. portfolio to take a loan yep. on their on their 401ks or whatever and then they, they don't ever sell it and then when they die it gets a step up cost basis to their to the people that are inheriting it dude what a move all right good god okay so yeah we're having some fun <laughs> man because it's just so amazing to me because there's so there's so many ways with crypto to impact the real world if you will quote unquote right it's not just this web three pie in the sky kind of thing it's actual hands-on physical application for everything it can infect uh, it can impact the car industry it can impact the uh real estate in industry like we see it can impact every industry under the sun and there's just so much utility that comes along with it when you go into let's say you guys pride a property you as the guy who's looking at the crypto part of it hey you can look at the crypto farming part of it what are you looking at when you look at the property what makes you say hey this is going to be perfect here or maybe hey we got to set up an adu in the back and we have to, you know, expand that way. What, what's, what's the thought process there? It depends on the goals for the property, right? Okay. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So like we're doing a, we're doing a, a real estate play right now where commercial property and the, uh, there's a lot of power available at this particular commercial property. Right. So the next thing you look at it, so it's, is there power? And this being an industrial property, we can look at industrial power. And then we want to get industrial pricing for your, your, your electricity rate. So it's basically how much electrical power is available and how much is that electricity per kilowatt hour. So those are Got two it. of the big determining factors in determining how much uh, profit might be there from the mining space. But uh, in a bull market, mm -hmm. electrical price doesn't matter, right? In a bull market... If it's you're making, it's all you know, if your cost of goods sold are, are twice as high, but if it's, right. if it's 2% instead of 4%, who cares? You're, yeah, so in a bull market, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But in a bear market, we care a lot, right? We're like, all right, let's, right. let's make sure we get the right price here. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So then basically, as you're looking at it, you're taking into account what it would be like in a bear market just to keep yourself safe when it comes down to whatever happens. Correct. So we do the same thing in real estate that we do in crypto mining. And what I, what I mean by that is like when you've got, when you've got, uh, when, when I run a, a model for a piece of real estate or even when we were doing, you know, you know, some of these bigger construction deals, we'd have like a, almost like a bell curve of, you know, here's your best case scenario. Here's your worst case scenario. Here's where it's probably right. going to land. Right. So that right. way you kind of know what you're looking at and you do the same thing on the crypto side. All right. If the price is here, if the bear market's here and the hash rate can, which is the you know, network difficulty, how, how hard it is to earn these coins, right? If that increases at this rate, how much, how many years out will this be profitable until we need a bull market um, to make it profitable or you unplug the machines? And so you really, you really kind of have to back into the math on the mining side as one thing, and then you back into the real estate on the other and then see together what do they look um, but, but one of the cool things, if you're selling investment properties and, and I wanted to touch on this, I, I'd forgotten this earlier. If you're selling investment properties, crypto mining only really needs electrical power. It doesn't need square feet, cubic feet of real estate. It needs electrical mm, power. So you can true. take a large, uh, yeah. So you can take a very large industrial space and put, take up a very small amount of square mm. footage of it. And that small square footage can make up more profits than the rent of all of the rest of the facility. And so if you, if you play your cards right, if it's an industrial or commercial space, that unit you can sublease to yourself from one LLC to another LLC. Mm -hmm. And if you pay over market rent, because look, you, you added all the electrical infrastructure, you added all the racks, you did all the build out. And in the real estate owning entity, now you can have your mining entity pay right. over market rent because of your, your amortizing all the costs of this. So now not only are you writing off all of your development, but now you've got over market rent. Well, what happens when you've got 10,000 square feet that's collecting rent like it's 15,000 square feet? Well, your cap rate just went 50% up. And now you're adding millions of dollars in value to properties because you've messed with your cap rate. And you know what? And if somebody buys it from me, fantastic, because I will be ecstatic to continue to use the mining capacity of this facility for the next five years, seven years, whatever, at that rate, because it's it's the most profitable part of the business. So why wouldn't you want to sell it at a higher cap rate and maintain use of the mining? <laughs> it feels like it feels like the uh, TikTok meme where they're like, hey, um, what do you know that you feel like you're you're cheating? This feels like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels like a cheat code. This is nuts. This is crazy. It, it, it's, it's just learning how to play the money game and learning how to play the real estate game. And thank, thankfully, my mentor is just incredible. Uh, he's just, he's brilliant and wise and godly. And so I, I can't speak enough highly about him, right? But, uh, but you, so I'm learning from him and, and, and how to play it legally, ethically. Like if you, my wife, CPA, she's the straightest shooter you'll ever see. Like she'll... She'll literally audit me for a penny. She's like, you said it was $30 and it's $29.99. <laughs> I'm like, hold on now. You're killing me. Like, like the, both of them are the straightest shooters. And so if they're, if it's in the rules, if it's in the rule book, we'll play by the rules. And if it's not in a rule book, we will, we don't fudge a penny. We don't, not a, not a bit. If it's income, you report your income. If you're required to report that as income. But sometimes you don't have to report that as income. You report it as this or that or these other mechanisms, right? So when you look at the tax code, like how do the ones of the world become billionaires and still never pay a single penny in in taxes or you know get refunds or whatever, right? How do they do it? Well, it's because the tax code is written for the wealthy. So to be able to become like the wealthy, you have to play the tax code and the money game like the wealthy. So what are the rules that they let you play by and then you just play by their rules. Oh, right. you want three LLCs and two different trusts and you want this and that and that entity pays that entity. And I don't own anything personally. And it's all in a, in a, in a trust or an LLC or some, some other asset. Okay. Let's play by the rules and you play by the rules. And by doing so, oftentimes there's, there's, there are cheat codes written into the rules. Right. Um, like for example, like, like our mining entity is partially owned by a Rob's 401k. You ever heard of a Rob's 401k? Never heard of that. 
Rob's our, I mean, me, me, me neither until we started <laughs> doing it. Right. Like we, we got okay. to talking to the attorneys and the CPAs, but like, it's, it's a retirement plan by politicians for politicians, which is probably why they call it a Rob's right. So it's oh a rollover God. business startup. It's a rollover business startup, 401k, and Roth 401k, which means you pay your X percent of a C corp tax rate, which I forget what it is. It's like 15, 17%, something like that. Well, you pay right. that. And then when you sell your company and you get all these profits on it, well, that's not taxed because it's owned in a Roth. Now I might have to worry about it because I'm, I'm still an infant, right? I'm like, right. I'm, I'm just nipping at 40. My, right. my, my partner, my, he, he might be able to access his a little bit sooner than me, but, uh, but I, like, I, I'm fine with that. I'm playing this for the long game anyway. I'm not interested in touching this till I'm done uh, of, of the appropriate Roth 401k age. Dude, this is, holy smokes. Okay. I'm learning so much today. We're going to, I don't want to go into Rob's yet. We're, we're going to, let's, let's dig deeper okay. into this crypto thing. Cause I think that's where people need to start. If you want to learn more about Rob's, go Google it. That'd be the move to do, right? Um, yep. For the crypto part, how do you decide what crypto to mine? How do you know? All right, well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Solana versus Ethereum versus, um, I don't know, whatever other popular one there is. I, you know, I'm so deep in the Solana, it's ridiculous. But anyway, um, what what other? What, how would you go about choosing what coin to mine in your property? So we're a Litecoin mine, and we also have excess capacity that we use for for Bitcoin miners. Um, now our Litecoin machines automatically switch between you know a dozen different currencies that they may mine as a side chain to Litecoin. But the primary thing that we mine is Litecoin. However, you can really mine whatever you feel like mining for a high ROI and get it into U.S. dollars and then convert it into the coin that you want. However, the more I'm in the space, the more I realize that there's like, in terms of mining coins, there's Bitcoin, there's Litecoin, mm -hmm. and then everything else is a, is a definitely riskier than Bitcoin, Litecoin. It's got mm -hmm. a lot higher risk tolerance than than those two main coins. Um, so like like Kadena, for example, I see this as an example. I don't know if you know this, but if you own 51% of the hash rate of most of these mineable networks, you can change the algorithm and change the coin to make it do what you want. And so it's called a 51% attack. Wow. So for example, Kadena right now is a mineable coin, super profitable. Uh, in fact, it's higher ROI than our computers here. Our computers right now, you can buy them at about 100% ROI. So if you buy a computer for four grand, it makes you four grand a year and it pays you out every 12 hours, right? So you just boom, boom, right. boom, boom, boom. But Kadena might be 150%. But we're not mining Kadena because the risk profile is different. Right now, I could go on online and spend, if I had $1.2 million dedicated to buy Kadena miners, I could buy 50% of global hash rate of Kadena, go into Kadena and change everybody's value of their Kadena coins like that because I spent my $1.2 million to buy the computers. Wow. And so one of the things that was transformative for me into getting into crypto is that not all crypto is crypto. Some crypto is, I don't wanna say guaranteed to go up, but is guaranteed to go up exponentially. Some crypto is really probable and is really great tech and is probably probably gonna do really well. And then some crypto you wanna run from. And until you really start looking and reading these white papers behind the coins, it's some of them are scary that I was like, this is a great coin. And then you read it you're like, Oh, never mind. It's terrifying. And some of them are wild, like BCH. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Terrifying, terrifying stuff. Right. <laughs> like I used to have, you know, a, a bunch of different coins in my wallet and I, I don't, it's, it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, the end. Right. Wow. So, um, uh, but that's just because I'm, 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 as you read the white papers, I get more and more scared about something. I'm not saying they're not great. Ethereum is just this phenomenal, incredible tech, wonderful tech but they switch from proof of work to proof of stake and they centralize. So the, the future of Ethereum sits on a board of that's chaired by Vitalik Buterin, Buterin as a nonprofit, right? So mm -hmm. it's still a nonprofit, but it, there's, a, there's a group of like five, six dudes that dictate all of what happens to Ethereum. Now, granted, they're big Ethereum holders, but that's not decentralized currency. It's a right. beautiful tech 
so much of the future blockchain, we're probably going to watch most of our house titles go onto the Ethereum network. It's an incredible, inve- uh, in my opinion, an incredible investment. But that to me is scary. Like if I can put my hands, if I can put my financial hands in the in the hands of a, a nonprofit board of five people, if I'm going to do that, mm-hmm. I might as well just go put it at the bank and let the bank tell me if they're going to close down my account or whatever, right? So, <laughs> right. so uh, uh, yeah, uh, so there's lots of upside in so many to- coins, right? And I'm not saying I don't play, right? Like, I, right. I, I, I heard from the, the Wall Street Bets boys, you know, Pepe was going up. I bought a few hundred dollars in Pepe. I don't play the lotto because I'm like, if I'm going to play the lotto, might as well be on a wallet. You know, right. I made my eight hundred dollars on my two hundred bucks. I got out. I was like, great. That's a that's a that's a that's a free thousand dollars towards the next investment, right? But I'm not. That's not the game you want to play. That's that's right. that's a scratch off ticket, right? And so I like. I, I, the reason I'm in the Bitcoin Litecoin space is because those are the two where once you really bury yourself in the tech, you're like, oh, they're guaranteed to be massively, massively more expensive now in the future than they are now. I'm in. And I, I, the other coins might beat them, but mm-hmm. I, they might, they, they have beaten them. Many coins have beaten them, right? Thousand, ten thousand, eight, you know, Dogecoin beat them, you know, thousands of percent a few years back. But in the long haul, on a 20 year span, Bitcoin, Litecoin, it's written into the algorithm. Uh, the, it, again, you never want to say that we're guaranteed, right? But it, just this guaranteed massive upside. And so I'm like, I, I, I'm in, I'm in. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I've always saw it as we know it's the future, but it's it's interesting because no matter how much you know or you think you know, you always learn more, right? So I always thought Bitcoin and Litecoin was more categories than they were actual coins. And as you're explaining, I'm realizing, oh, oh they're actual coins. It's not just like I always thought. Okay, Solana's a a type of Bitcoin, not Bitcoin is Bitcoin. It's almost like um, like Kleenex became the tissue name like everything from that point was kleenex oh all of this is kleenex right yeah and it's it's the same thing it's, it's very very interesting just how deep you can go in it i'm like after this interview i already have a feeling i already i got a book on it i'm gonna i'm gonna have to dive deeper into that book again i'm gonna have to move that up my book list because that man <laughs> oh, i'm so excited i'm so excited just just realizing like we said the utility of it the ability to like you said you can purchase a property um, so, for example, we got the 16 unit in Kentucky. It has a crypto mine in it. I think it's in a laundry room. Don't quote me that, but I think it's in a laundry room. But even if somebody purchases the property, we can still, hey, in the contract, that property is, uh oh, the lights went out. Uh, <laughs> that property <Yeah>. is maintained. <laughs> <laughs> that property is still maintaining that crypto, that crypto mining. That's absolutely fantastic. That's absolutely perfect. So, all right. So let me let's let's go on to another part of this with you getting into it. And this will be the last question, because I know, Nathan, you got things to do in life other than just talk to my group yourself. So um, with you getting into crypto where or not, not that you're getting into crypto, with you being in crypto, where do you think right now is the place that's going to be impacted the most when it comes to real estate and crypto? Is it the title company? Is it just property ownership? Is it like the plumbers and GC space? What's going to be hit the hardest or not hit the hardest, but hit in the best way when it comes to crypto? So being in the mining space and seeing all of this stuff that's going to the tech, mm-hmm. I, and I, mind you, I'm, I feel like every, every year I find myself looking back on myself the year prior <laughs> and and it wanted to quote uh it wanted to quote Forrest Gump, right? I'm not a smart man, right? I just <laughs> I I just uh, you know, you learn so much and I, I as I just finally this year kind of figured out a little bit that right. that the real asset, the real asset in crypto is electricity. Like Nikola Tesla said this uh, you know, 150 years ago. He says, hey, one day they're going to be able to take electricity, which is the real power, real, ironically, it's actually measured in, in power, right, in, in watts and horsepower. But we're going to be able to take the real power of electricity and convert that into dollars, convert that into money. Right. And that's what Bitcoin, Litecoin, and other mineable currencies do, is they take electricity and they convert it into dollars. So like the global average, that when people say, you know, Bitcoin is a fiat currency or it's going to nothing, there's no, it's not no intrinsic value i'm like absolutely there's a ton of value like my 
like to mine a Bitcoin at at our most efficient mine, it costs mm -hmm. like eighteen thousand dollars in electricity. So if Bitcoin goes below eighteen thousand dollars, you unplug those computers. But what happens when you unplug the computers? The supply dries up and it forces up the price. And so, and I've got facilities right now where it's barely profitable to mine uh, to mine uh, uh, Bitcoin because the Bitcoin price is is matching the electric price. And so wow. as the cost of fossil fuels goes up, fuel, all these things, the cost of transformers, the cost of copper in the lines, the cost of steel for the racks, as the cost of living are, are globally, but especially in this country right now, as the cost of living is exploding, so is the cost of mining. And right. as the cost of mining goes up, when you unplug the machines because it's not profitable, you evaporate the supply. But what happens when you've got an exponentially growing curve vertical for the demand, like global adoption rates are like the internet in 97 for crypto right now. Everybody's wanting to get into buying Bitcoin, like buying crypto, learning it. It's, it's, it's on fire, it's exploding. Wallet use, new tech, all this stuff on it. So as adoption rates go vertical, what happens when your supply goes to nothing? Well, the price explodes and now it's profitable and then, it, and, and then you plug them in. And so in Bitcoin, that's the beauty of Bitcoin and Litecoin, and that's why you can kind of time the market with some semblance of accuracy. Is because every four years there's a halving, meaning if it used to cost you twenty one thousand dollars mine in Bitcoin, in eight months that price just doubled. It goes to forty two thousand dollars, and so now everybody that's that their electric rate is costs them more than forty two grand. They unplug the computer, dries up the supply, and the demand is still going vertical every four years. You see the kick, boom, vertical, mm. boom, vertical. Boom, vertical. So you know, like if you if you time the having, like when when is the when's the next all time high of Bitcoin? Probably in Q three of twenty twenty four. Like you can time it. Boom. It, it, right. it doesn't follow some like mythical band. It, it follows like the the having schedule because that's the supply and demand curve. And so when I realized that, and as we got into that, we said, all right, well, we got to get more computers. We got to get more. I realized the real value is in electricity, electricity, right? So like, I don't know if you can see this, but like, this is, that's electricity, right? This is, right. this is one sixth of, of the panels on this, uh, on this particular facility. So there's six buildings identical to this one where I'm sitting, but that, that I'm looking at all these amps, thousands and thousands of amps, that's the real commodity. And so just like solar, solar panels are a commodity they have a value to them and you can do something with them these electrical panels all we're doing is converting available electrical resources into currency and there's a cost of goods sold that's associated with it. it's a business right it's a cost of goods sold my cost of a light coin might be you know 45 dollars, and if i'm selling them for 70 dollars, i win and if litecoin drops to 43 dollars, well i unplug the computers and i wait for the price to go up um because you're you're playing a supply demand curve so you, you've got this really neat way of instantaneously transferring excess electrical capacity from the people that have it to the people that want it. Right. That's, that's like every, every barrel of crude oil that we store, every, every wind turbine we put in, every solar panel we put in, every renewable resource project that we're trying to get our hands on is ultimately trying to create electricity and all of those markets together are about to be wildly trumped by the cryptocurrency mining industry as it, it just blows up. So excess electricity on your sites, at your house, right. like think about this, you've got, you've got a house that you can plug in a $4,000 machine and turn it into a heater or put it you know, in a garage or whatever and make another four grand uh, a year by mining a currency that you've already got the asset. So looking at electrical capacity as though it's an asset, looking at the electrical capacity as though it's a thing to be commoditized is transformative in the way you look at real estate because every real estate play, you gotta have lights, yeah. you gotta have power. So looking at it and saying like, I was just talking with a guy yesterday in Texas and he's saying, hey, I'm, buy I'm about to buy this apartment complex, 16 doors, um, it was distressed sale. I'm already walking into a, a great deal but there's a, there's a one megawatt transformer out front. Well, let's go and drop a Connex box, tap into that, because those people aren't going to need, you don't need a megawatt <laughs> for 16 doors. So let's go put a Connex box right. outside. Doesn't mess with your real estate, but it's going to pay more rent than all your tenants put together. 
So let's commoditize this part of the asset that right. historically it's just been stranded electrical power, but now it's an asset that can be that can be commoditized and liquidated and sold. This is so it just turns it can turn a, a okay deal into a great deal. A great deal into an yes. amazing deal. It's just yes. oh my goodness, it's so dope. All right. I, I know I right, Nathan, I know you gotta go. Um you and I are gonna talk more after this, I'm certain. But for now, I want you to give the listener today's troop to task. So for those who are listening, Nathan is going to break down to you one thing you can do right now to get started, be it in the crypto space, be it in real estate. Shoot, Nathan might tell you how to improve your surfing technique on the beach. I don't know, but we're going to give Nathan the floor right now. Nathan, what is this week's troop to task? I would say start paying attention to what is happening in the crypto space. So it's not just coins. And in fact, the, the idea of coins is a, is a bit of a, a disservice to the crypto industry because it sounds trivial and trinkety. Mm. But pay attention to what's happening. Let me give you an example. Uh, last week, I'm, pre- I'm super proud about this, right? This, okay. th- this is a, the life dream. Um, it's coming true, right? So I'm gonna tell you about it. I just put, the fir- for the first time ever, I inscribed the Bible onto the Litecoin blockchain <laughs> one book at a time. And so now I can give anybody a seven digit number globally. And right. if you have a wallet, a, a crypto wallet with a screen that can take a Litecoin coin, you can read the entire Bible in a decentralized, ungovernable, wow. immutable, can't take it down, it's there for all of eternity kind of way. Right. So imagine put, giving a Bible to somebody that has a Bible, oh, I don't know how to get to it. It's a penny. I can send it to you. It, they round up to a penny for how much it cost me to send you a Bible. Like these are transformative texts. So if you're in the if you're in the religious space, mm-hmm. this is going to transform your life. If you're in the real estate space, crypto is going to transform your life. It's going to transform how you buy an apartment complex. It's going to give access to the little guys uh, like like me. Right? It's going to give me access to to buy real estate assets. I never. Oh, I want a piece of the Empire State Building. Okay, well, once it's tokenized, I can get a piece of it, wow. right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to transform art. If you're in art, it is actively transforming art, right? Many people look at NFTs like, and there's, well, that's a whole other conversation, right? But, yeah, um, of course. but it's transforming art. It's transforming vehicles. Like they're, they're right now, I, I just watched a demo from a company that is taking your car key and turning it into an NFT so you can take it or remove it from your teenager or your buddy who needs to drive your car right to his NFT wallet so he can hold his phone up to the car and start the car. I mean, so like it is transforming every aspect. And if you pay attention, we are so, so early in it. If you pay attention, it will be transformative for your business, for your real estate holdings, and for your personal wealth. Look at what Bitcoin and Litecoin are doing in, in, in terms of finances in the next few years. Look at tokenized real estate. If you pay attention to space, it's going to impact your life. You might as well get a piece of it and let it make your life easier, better, and more streamlined and wealthier while, while it's still super young to adopt. Wow. Holy smokes. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Get on the crypto train and not just the crypto train. Get into the tech space. Learn about what's happening implement these things ai is not the only newbie in in the game right we're still early in the crypto game you're still early in the ai game take these tools and use them i promise you do you don't want to end up like toys r us you don't want to end up like blockbuster you don't want to end up Mm. like any of these companies who fell apart when the netflixes and the amazon came along and took over things because they embraced new technology i'm telling you it's the move ladies and gentlemen we got to go Nathan, thank you so much for coming on. This has been an excellent conversation. I'm looking forward to the growth of a great friendship in this crypto space. I'm going, I'm, you're on speed dial now, brother. It's over. Yeah, <laughs> let's on. go. I love it. Anytime we talk about crypto and Jesus, I'm ready to go. Hey, man. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go because that's exactly what we're about to talk about now. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember, you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. I love you, fighter. Go out there and be somebody. Do something great. We'll see you next time. This is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know.
keep it a two to form 10 L's into a milli though But day I had he knew that those Pharrell to your opinions Know that he is something this is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know. Yeah, keeping it true to form, but there I had he knew that y'all. Here we go.